Now, we have our Bibles tonight, and um, I want to, I, I got to see what I can do with the time that's been allotted to me. You heard me correctly. My beloved husband is going to be joining me tonight, and it's the first time on a Monday. Typically, he joins me on Fridays, but he is uh, joining me tonight, and we're going to be bringing you the headlines tonight. But before uh, we, we go any further, I really want to just uh, read the Word of God. Is that all right? Heck yeah, it's all right. Go with me to the book of Revelation chapter 1, please. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. Father, we give you praise, O oh Lord. We give you praise. Revelation chapter 1. The Bible says in verse 7, Behold, he is coming. Are you reading along with me? Do you have your Bibles? Do you see what I'm seeing here? Because it says here, Behold, he is coming. Behold, he is coming. Jesus is coming. You may be excited this week because you may have some family members coming over to your house. You may have a friend or a loved one coming over. You may be expecting someone to come over that you've been very excited about. You finally get to meet up. But see, the Bible says there's someone greater that's coming. Behold, he said, look here. He is coming. Jesus is coming. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him. If you have eyes, you're going to see Jesus. If you have eyes, you're going to see Jesus. It doesn't matter if you're, if you're, if you're what, what the doctors would label you, medically blind. The Bible says that every eye shall see him. Listen, every eye shall see him, even they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. Even so, even so, amen. Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. You know, he states this in Revelation chapter 1. Now, I want you to quickly go with me to the book. Uh, well, we're still in the book of Revelation, but quickly go with me to Revelation chapter 22, which is the last chapter of the book of Revelation. So in the beginning, being the Alpha and the Omega, he declares that he is coming. In the last chapter, again, being the Alpha and the Omega, meaning the beginning and the end, Jesus declares yet again in verse 12, and behold, I'm coming quickly. Do you believe he's coming quickly? Do you? Do you believe that Jesus is coming? You may say, oh yeah, of course I do. Everybody does. I go to church. I've heard that he's coming. So yeah, sure, I believe it. All right. How well do you believe it? Are you living every day as if he could come at any moment? That would require a very narrow walk, saints. Do you believe he's coming? Do you really believe that the Lord is coming? Well, but you, you may say, oh, well, I do believe it, but he, he's not coming anytime soon. I mean, he says he's coming soon, but he's not going to come tonight. I don't believe he's going to come actually for the next 50 to 100 years, maybe even the next thousand years. But yeah, he's coming. Sometime later. Some other generation, some other decade, some other century. Not, not anytime soon. I pray God wake you up. I pray God wake your father, wake that person up who believes that. Wake them up who believes that you're not coming anytime soon. That you're coming soon, but not anytime soon. That they actually think that there's more time. Not recognizing that time is up. Because you say, O oh Lord, behold, I'm coming quickly. Jesus said, and behold, I'm coming quickly. He said, behold. He said, look here, I'm coming quickly, and my reward is with me. My reward is with me. To give to everyone according to his work. You know, someone may say, oh, evangelist, I thought, I thought we're not saved by works. So what does Jesus mean here that he has a reward for us according to our work? Is he trying to say that we're saved by works? No, that's not what Jesus is saying at all. You're not saved by your works. You're saved by faith through, through his grace. Not that of ourselves. It's a gift of God. Lest any man should boast, of course. 
but after you're saved. It's what you do after you become saved. The works that you do after you become saved that will weigh on the balances as to whether they will be burnt up or whether they will receive a reward. God loves to give things out, if you've noticed. He's a giver of good things. For the Bible says in the book of James that the Father of life gives. The Father of, God, uh, the, the Father of lights give with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. He loves giving. He gave his one and only begotten son so that who, whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He's a giver of good things. He says, the plans that I have for you are of good and not of evil to give you a hope and a future. He loves to give. He's a rewarder to those who diligently seek him, who believe that he is, that he is God. And he says, Behold, I'm coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. Yes, beloved saints, make no mistake about it. After you become born again, after you become saved through faith, by his grace, he's looking for the work that you're going to be doing. He's looking to see what you're going to do now with his life. Excuse me, with your life. With him in you now, the hope of glory. With his spirit being poured out upon you. What works are you going to be doing? Listen, you're doing works whether you realize it or not. If you go to work every day, you set your alarm clock to 5 a.m. to make sure that you're on time. You beat the traffic. You get to the office. You're there for 9 to 12 hours a day. You come back home. You're, you're doing works. Why is it so hard for the church to believe that God is looking at our works just so he can simply reward us come that time because he's coming quickly? You know, Jesus even said something very peculiar to his disciples. When he walked this earth, he said, when I, when I come back to earth, will, will, will I find any faith? Will I find any faith when I return to earth again? When I, when I come back, will I find faith on the earth? He's hoping he does because he has a reward. He has rewards. So many of us hoping that we get a reward or promotion from our boss. Don't exchange the reward of God for a cheap imitation that's going to burn up come that time. Don't just sell your birthright for a measly bowl of soup. Don't you dare compromise at the workplace all for the sake of getting a promotion, getting a reward. That is temporal. That is actually, it means nothing. It means nothing. I pray that each and every one of us, because he is coming. Behold, he's coming. And if you really believe he's coming, if you really believe that the day of the Lord is nigh, you will work the work until he comes. You will work the work. You will be about your father's business. You will not be busybodies in these last days talking gossip, talking nonsense, talking with your neighbors, talking about nothing nothingness. Don't waste your time talking about nothing. Waste your time talking about sports, talking about the soap operas, talking about what, uh, you know, just, just whatever gossip is now laying around. The, the devil's so busy. The question is, are you? And if you're busy, let it be not being busy bodies, but being busy about your father's business because he's coming. He has rewards. Why not? Why would you not want to receive a, a, a reward from your father? Some may say, oh, well, evangelist, I don't need any rewards. I don't need any rewards for God's salvation through his son, Jesus Christ, and saving me from hell, from all eternity without him, is reward enough. I'm not looking for rewards. I'm not looking for acolytes. Tough. Whether you're looking for it or not, he is giving. And if you really want to please the Father, you're going to work in these last days to allow him to give to you a reward because it pleases the Father. It pleases him. Who are we to tell him, no, 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 you've done so much. We don't want to, we don't want to get any more. Who are we to tell him that? He just saved us. It pleases him to give to us. It pleases him to reward us. But he's going to be looking for our work. He's going to be looking to see what we did with our time while here on earth. He's going to be looking to see what we did with our time while we had the opportunity to preach the gospel or to, to maybe start a ministry or to go out and evangelize to co-workers or friends or to strangers for crying out loud. 
He's going to look just to see. He's, he's going to be rewarding for the most littlest of things. Things that you didn't even think that he would reward you from. Things you didn't even think. I know I have children tuning in right now. There are many children around the world that are tuning into this broadcast. We get to broadcast. There are up to 190 nations each week that tune into these broadcasts. And I know that there are precious children and teenagers that tune in. And you may say, oh, I, I'm probably not going to get a reward because I haven't done anything for the kingdom of God. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a preacher. You know, I'm just a kid. What am I going to do? Well, let me tell you. If your mother or your father preaches the gospel, if they're reading their Bible just to get more informed, if they're teaching you the things of God, you simply listening with a whole heart, you're going to get a reward. If your mother or your father's out there preaching the gospel, or if, you're, or if it's just one of the parents, and you simply help in the house, you simply wash the dishes, or you sweep the floor, or you minister to your own little brothers and sisters, if you have them, about the things of God, you're going to get a reward. God is going to give out rewards for the most littlest of things that we didn't even think about was actually helping pursue his kingdom. Have his kingdom be expanded in these last days. Because he's coming. Anything that helps the preaching of his word to go out forth into the entire globe and to make disciples of all men will receive a reward. His day is coming. Let it be that you're found working until that day. Working the harvest field until that day. Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. The very first thing that he said in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, he says again in the last chapter of the book of Revelation, of course, being again the Alpha and the Omega, he declares it one more time. I, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, who do his words. Working the word, be ye doers of the word and not just hearers only, deceiving yourselves, is what James says. Chapter 2. Blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city, the holy Jerusalem, the city, new Jerusalem, which you can read in Revelation chapter 21. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexual immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. Verse 16, I, Jesus, Father God, he's speaking. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bride and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come and let him who hears Say, come. Come. Amen. And let him who thirsts, come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. There's a warning, though, that comes with this. There's a warning that comes with this. In verse 18, it says, For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Amen. That's a word. That's a word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. This is Evangelist Anita Fuentes uh, bringing to you some updated information for our next conference, our second city that we're hitting in this 2016 Open Your Eyes People Tour, Los Angeles, California. We're expected to be there June 18th, 2016. However, there has been a change of location. We originally had space set out at the Holiday Inn at the Los Angeles International Airport in La Cienega. Things have changed. We are no longer at that venue. The venue has instead been uh, switched over uh, just a couple of blocks over to West Century Boulevard at the Hilton. You heard me correctly. The Hilton Los Angeles Airport. 
Uh, the address is 5711 West Century Boulevard, Los Angeles, California, 90045. Uh, 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 everything else is the same. The date is the same, June 18, 2016. Doors open, 9.15 a.m. Event starts at 10 a.m. all the way till 2.30 p.m. It will be located at the Pacific Ballroom at the Hilton Los Angeles Airport. Mark your calendars. The seats are free. We get to accommodate to 200 people, so we have plenty of seating. Uh, there is a parking rate. They were able to discount it. The parking rate is at $14 from $29. However, we here at Open Your Eyes people are looking to see if we can eat up some of the costs and at least try to slash it to half to where it can bring you to a parking of $7. So we'll... I'm so in talks of, of this parking thing, but I don't want $14 to stop anyone from coming in. So if you think that you can't even handle $14, we'll pick up the tab for you. You just need to get there. You And now you, you have my word now. You just need to get there. Mark your calendars, June 18, 2016. Again, Hilton, Hilton, Los Angeles Airport. If you have the Holiday Inn address, things have changed. We're not meeting there on June 18th. We're meeting at the new location. If you have any additional questions, concerns, feel free to contact me personally. Anita at emof.org. Anita at emof.org. No registration is required. I look forward to seeing you there.